Well, the historic inauguration of Kamala Harris as America's Vice President has further cemented the importance of the relationship between the United States and India, according to a top White House official. Born to a Jamaican father and an Indian mother, 56-year-old Kamala Harris made history on Wednesday when she was sworn in as the first female, first black and first Asian-American U.S. Vice President. The former senator from California was sworn in just before Joe Biden took the oath of office to become the 46th President of the United States. Addressing reporters at a daily news conference on Thursday, the White House press secretary said President Biden respects the long bipartisan successful relationship between India and the United States. The historic inauguration of uh, Indian origin Kamala Harris, the official said, further cements this relationship. In this edition of uh, India's World, we will analyze India-US ties under the Biden presidency. Joining me on the program today are Yashwant Raj, US correspondent of the Hindustan Times, Jitendra Nath Mishra, former ambassador, and uh, Swaran Singh, chairperson, Center for International Politics Organization and Disarmament, JNU. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of India's World. Yashwant Raj, let me begin the program with you first. Really, what is the uh, uh, you know, sense as far as the Biden administration is concerned uh, towards India? Uh, thanks for having me here, Frank. And, uh, it's a pleasure to meet everyone on the panel. Uh, but it's too early uh, to see where the Biden administration will go on in India because typically what happens when a new administration comes in, uh, the first couple of months are gone, are devoted to dom domestic policy. And and Biden comes in with a, at a very, uh, very critical time for the U.S., which is undergoing this um, major uh, epidemic which has been the worst hit country in the world. So that's his top priority and the economic crisis that has come with the epidemic. So he will barely find any time for foreign policy. But of course, because of his long years in, you know, as, as a senator, he was very involved with the, he was chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. So he has long experience and involvement with foreign policy. So, but there are already some signs that have Begun emerging uh, uh, during uh, Blinken, you know, his nominee for Secretary of State, his his confirmation hearing, he spoke at length about India, and he also made the same point that Jen Psaki made on uh, the White House press conference about how there is bipartisan support for India, and uh, and he recounted how it, the relationship has evolved over time, uh, over different over, over all the uh, previous administrations and. He he also pointed to uh, you know that India and the U.S. could do more on climate change uh, together. So that is one specific point he made. And General and Lloyd Austin, the, who got who was confirmed yesterday for Secretary of Defense, he spoke about India's uh, uh, you know the designation of India as a major defense partner and the importance of Quad uh, going forward. So uh, there are good signs. Uh, uh, and and again, uh, j just so that I don't forget, uh, President Biden started making calls to foreign uh, leaders, and the first was uh, Justin Trudeau yesterday, uh, the Canadian Prime Minister. And so very soon uh, he will probably also call uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, if you remember, Prime Minister Modi was among the first uh, world leaders, a uh, group of world leaders he he called uh, to return the congratulatory me uh, messages and. So we expect something to happen on those lines, but the first few months will be mostly do domestic and uh, and uh, you know, I mean, as, as you can tell from all the executive action orders he has issued so far. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Ambassador, let me come come across to you now. You know, so what are some of the telltale signs that we need to look out for, really, and see which direction probably the Indo-U.S. Uh, relationship mm -hmm. will be going towards? First of all, Frank, thank you very much for inviting me for the show again. Well, the direction of the relationship is positive, and uh, there is bipartisan support, as we just heard. That's a very important point, and that's been repeated by many officials. Over the last decades, the last four presidents of the United States, whether Republican or Democrat, have followed the same set of policies broadly. And here, the direction of the relationship in the next four years will be determined 
by the global setting and primarily by the rise of China and the need to respond to the rise of China. And this is uh, not stated openly for obvious reasons in diplomacy, but this is going to be something always lurking in the background. And the, both the countries are abundantly aware of that. So I would argue that uh, this relationship will be determined at the strategic level. Let us start with the political and strategic level. We already have mechanisms for two plus two, which is an annual meeting alternately in both the capitals. We have the defense relationship institutionalized. We have the quad. We have a broad spectrum of issues. Every global issue, climate change, counterterrorism, cyber security, outer space, Everything is being discussed. When I was in the United States, we really had nothing much to say. We had to hear the Americans when I was posted there many years ago because India was not truly a power with global uh, heft and global power and influence able to influence global issues. As the external affairs minister has said, we want to lead. We don't want to balance anymore. So we have to take responsibilities. Now, coming to China, obviously, the Quad is very important. We don't know exactly what's happened. The Quad has a long, uh, a long, it has taken some time to evolve into a regular dialogue at the ministerial level, but we are not sure. And uh, right now, from our point of view, China is right there, up there. The trade issues uh, are important, and I don't think they'll be resolved. Uh, the differences over uh, the trade issues will be resolved. Human rights. I think we'll be all right. There will be some noises made by the Americans on human rights in India. And uh, President Biden, in his campaign uh, documents, had spoken about the CAA and Kashmir. But um, I suspect that this will again be in the back burners because of the more pressing need to engage in a way that we can deal with the rise of China as a concert of powers together with other like-minded countries. And th there will be, uh, of course, um, uh, the, the president and the administration will be right now concerned with domestic issues. And we also heard statements that the priority is to revive the economy and uh, the priority is to, uh, to strengthen the country internally. And everything else will be subordinate to that. So India will not be right there, up there in the radar. But as a long-term or uh, medium-term prospect, it's going to be very, very optimistic. Uh, it's going to be a very strong relationship. It has been said very clearly from the American side. And of course, from the Indian side, the spokesman had said when President-elect uh, Biden was uh, elected that uh, there is bipartisan support uh, in the United sure. States. So, uh, so I see a very bright future. Right. So uh, since we are here then, Professor, let's talk about uh, China and focus a little bit on the Indo-Pacific and what's likely to happen there. We saw under the Trump administration, you know, uh, President Trump had taken a very uh, tough stand as far as China is concerned. Can we see more of that? Can we see the U.S., you know, uh, uh, interacting and coordinating a lot more with the Quad to try and contain China or try and, uh, you know, uh, ensure that China is given a taste of its own medicine, especially in the Indo-Pacific? There is no doubt we saw uh, during election campaigns uh, that China had emerged as a major issue. And uh, post-pandemic, China has already announced being the only country to achieve 2.3% of positive growth, hitting a GDP now at 15.5 trillion US dollars. So China is a competitor in trade and technology, and of course, also as a strategic challenge to United States continues, which also means that India will be a very close partner of United States in how to engage with China. For example, foundations that are already laid during last four years, and there is no, uh, no secret about the fact that uh, we were able to invoke LEMOA, Logistics Exchange uh, Memorandum of Agreement, in having an urgent purchase of those special uh, high altitude winter clothing which is, which is required for Indian forces in Ladakh in minus 30 degree. And of course, there are reports also of uh, United States sharing intelligence 
and we had recently signed in October that agreement on sharing geospatial data, both nautical and aeronautical and ground maps, to give you coordinates of enemy, enemy positions. So reports are that US has been helping India even on that. So some of the things that have already been put on place will continue. But of course, as we have heard uh, President Biden repeatedly underlining two things. One, he wants to push value-based foreign policy. Second, have a close cooperation with allies and partners and thereby reclaim the United States global leadership. And very often, United States is a unique case where domestic is as much international as domestic it is. So even when the initial focus will be on domestic pandemic, 400,000 lives lost in the United States. So what we may see is maybe not as stronger focus on defense and security cooperation with India, but expanding health security, for example. India provides largest workforce for health sector and also, of course, medicines. So in that sense, we might see cooperation broad basing itself into health security, stronger, robust people to people cooperation. 1% of United States domestic population are people of Indian origin. So Indian origin people are also very influential. And then of course we have spoken endlessly about Kamala Harris being an important connect with India. So I think there is going to be an enormous focus in broad basing India relationship in people to people, economic and trade relationship, health security, and continuing with that strong global, you know, strategic partnership, comprehensive global, comprehensive global strategic partnership, which has been built over the last four years. So India will continue to be an important player as far as the United States reclaiming global leadership using value-based foreign policy is concerned. And therefore, I think that there is going to be incremental, may not be major redesigning, but incremental reshaping of the relationship. And I think India will continue to be a very important player in how Joe Biden reclaims global leadership. Absolutely. All right. And since we are here, uh, Yashwant Raj, let's also talk about uh, the uh, new areas of convergence and how the pandemic really could ensure that India and the United States collaborate, uh, you know, further to try and ensure that we put an end to the pandemic. After all, we are the pharmacy of the world. Also, uh, can we expect further convergence as far as the economy is concerned, because let's not forget that the entire globe is going through a tough time uh, with regards to the economy. So could these also be areas of further convergence? Oh, there is already cooperation on uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, fighting the epidemic, and uh, they've been in touch, the two governments have been in touch. And as you know, as you rightly said, India is emerging as, as a major supplier of COVID vaccines. Uh, yes, only yesterday, I think a major shipment was sent to Morocco. And uh, so uh, and that's that's an emerging area. I mean, there is no area where India and the U.S. are not cooperating or working together. And uh, pharm uh, and pharmaceuticals is one of them. I mean, India is where a lot of American medicines are manufactured, especially the generic uh, medicines. And uh, so that is an ongoing cooperation and uh, on economy uh, that's again a, it's 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 a you know evolving story and uh, you know now bilateral trade is worth 150 billion dollars i think 160 uh, and uh, and i could be uh, it, it could be more uh, but we will eventually have to talk about the trade there is a trade the trade tensions i mean that have been uh, trade tensions have been hanging over the relationship for a long time, and during uh, President Trump's time, uh, there was a, an urgency to tackle the issue, and uh, but nothing happened eventually uh, because uh, uh, I believe the Americans kept changing the goalposts because they kept getting uh, they kept asking for more and more, and they put more demands were put on the table, so that eventually didn't happen. So at some stage, the Biden administration will have to look at uh, a, a trade uh, agreement of some sort, of me, uh, an interim small trade agreement with with the promise of a larger uh, agreement at some stage. But uh, that will be key to, uh, to, to, to the economic relationship between the two countries. And we haven't heard much from the Biden administration on trade uh, dispute tensions yet. But I think uh, we will have to wait for the USTR, the new USTR, US Trade Representatives. When she goes before the Senate for her confirmation hearing, we expect to hear something from her on, 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 on trade talks with India. 
So, and that is going to be a critical point. Absolutely. So, you know, since we're talking about convergence, let's also talk about divergence, Ambassador. And where do you believe uh, some of the sticky issues lie and the issues that need special attention uh, under the Biden presidency? Trade is the foremost issue, and the Americans have been talking about protectionism in India. They have their concerns. We have our concerns. And uh, this has already been discussed. I won't go into that. But human rights. Now, uh, the CAA human rights, the Americans are likely to say something. They said things in their uh, election manifestos. Uh, there were statements both by the pri uh, there were uh, something in both by the president and the vice president. So therefore, there will be uh, some irritation out there. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, it will still be dealt with in a mature way because we also have some cars. There are also issues in the United States that might be causing concern in the rest of the world with regard to racism, for example, and with regard to what happened uh, before the inauguration, the weeks before that, uh, the subversion of democracy and the verdict. So therefore, it's not as if uh, the US is uh, absolutely lily white in this issue. So we do have uh, certain issues that we could raise, at least at the tactical level, if that comes up. But I don't think it's going to cast a major shadow, a minor shadow, yes, but not a major shadow on the relationship that must go forward. And then uh, as regards vaccine diplomacy, now I'm just revisiting that and diverting a little bit. The vaccine diplomacy, this is not a problem, a stumbling block, which is the question you asked, but this is a solution in a broader sense, in a strategic sense. Look. The Indian uh, vaccines have found much greater acceptance so far.